The Super Dane is in the beam. What is going on guys? It is your boy Mac and Mickey coming back to you with another vlog. So basically what's happening is I'm getting some VCRs so that way I don't have to pay the full price of Red Button Universe because that's, that's kind of expensive. But this one don't work and this one don't work. So I might just end up paying the full price of worth of VCR. This guy named Cedric, I don't know who this guy is. He's retweeting me, all my tweets, all my music, but he doesn't even follow me. What a what a doofus. You hear that, Cedric? If you're watching, you're a, you're a big old doofus if you're not following at the Super Dane. Let's see if we can translate that. He says, I advise you to listen to insert coins first. Now, if that's actually accurate, Microsoft Translate, then Cedric, I'm gonna have to say, just don't listen to this. No, I'm not talking to Cedric. I'm saying, hey, don't listen to Cedric, all right? Don't listen to insert coins first. Listen to the first song first, you dingus. I put a lot of work in the the order of the songs, all right? I spent a lot of time on that. So my new album just came out called I'm Not Cool. Pulled a little, pulled a little Shia LaBeouf there. The, the, you smart people out there kind of caught that. And this is the best album that I've made so far, in my opinion. This is the first album that I actually understood what an album really is. In order to understand what we're talking about, we're gonna have to go back to the early days and see what happened to my musical career. And then we'll get to all the cool behind the scenes stuff. The making of. My first album was While I'm Still Here. I made that a Magix Music Maker using loops and stuff. I don't really, I just put it up on, on my SoundCloud for historical sake. It's not very good. You don't, don't want, you don't want to listen to it. But my first, my two, first two real albums, which I believe I released them within a day of each other, was Rhapsody and Basic and Weirder Stuff. At this point, I was sort of uh, just getting started. I'd already been messing around with GarageBand, but this is the first time that I was actually not using loops and trying to make stuff. And it was just sort of experimental synth stuff. And then my EP after that called I Can't Feel My Eyes When I'm Sleeping is the, this album where I tried to experiment. There's four songs on there. The best one is probably Specular Rhapsody. Miss soundtrack. Redux, not Redux. is more synthy stuff. Super Dane 64, still more synthy stuff. Electronic Sorbet, still more synthy stuff. And then we get to Back to Basics. Back to Basics was the first album that I made entirely using Ableton Live 9 Lite. And because of this, my songs really started to go downhill. Windgrove, that's more sort of experimental stuff, trying to figure out where, what my musical sound is, what do I want to sound like. Hungry Rhapsody, I actually think this was a good album. I thought that I was going to be like a comedy musician, like Weird Al or something. So I went back to a lot of my older songs from those previous albums that I talked about, and I put lyrics on them. And some of them are pretty funny, a lot of them are, although the mixing is not very good because, you know, I was afraid of those red LEDs. I was afraid of clipping. I didn't know what, le what a limiter was. So I just kind of kept it around at negative 12 dB. Then we get Sega. There's a couple good songs on here, but really at this point, I, I still thought that an album was just a compilation of whatever music you made in a time frame. I didn't understand that an album is just a collection, should be a collection of songs that are, that are similar and they share similar qualities and that you could actually make an album instead of compiling an album. Science Major, there's only one good song on there and that's Drop the Bucket. Let's all, let's all be serious here. Educational rap is where it's at. Now here's the thing. I started, once I made my Sir Norgib character, I thought, okay, well this is clearly where I want to go. I want to make more of this comedy music. And then here, Norgib the show was the, just the bottom for me. A lot of these songs, I just kind of rushed, threw them in there just to increase the count on the album. It was at this point that I realized I'm not really doing what I want to do. So I sort of took a little break and then I made... Super Dane Magenta album, self-titled album, and that's me just going back to basics, like that one album that didn't go back to basics, trying to make these experimental synth songs and stuff, and I think it's, it's it was really good. I did a really good job. Oh yeah, and then Ambassador Chicago, that's another sort of surreal album. Um, <laughs> karaoke Hits, that's a good one. And you can hear in documentary about the school soundtrack that are sort of transitioning into like a lo-fi hip-hop sort of sound. You can see that I kind of started to experiment with electronic dance music, so I made Why Now, just a three-song EP. So then I thought, well, why don't I try to make an album for the first time? Just have a vision for what I want the album to be like, this kind of story that it wants to tell, and stuff like that. 
So I made I'm Not Cool, sort of inspired by mostly Calvin Harris. I, I created disco. I have to say Calvin Harris is probably the most influential artist for me. His first album is. I don't I haven't heard any of his other songs. The first album was like this electro clash, new disco sort of thing. And what I really liked about it, I don't know if he was the first to do this, but it was the first time that I heard this. You, you use the space in between beats, the silence, as like another instrument that sort of builds tension. That's That really interested me, so I started making these songs. So, that, so let's go ahead and go down the list and talk about each of these songs that are in the album, starting with the first one, Emmer Effer. A little fun fact about this one is that I can't really listen to it anymore because it drives me insane because of how many times I had to listen to that repetitive melody when I was actually making the song. So now it just gives me a headache, which is unfortunate, because I think it's a good song. So that's kind of what I was talking about, just the bum, but a bum bum. Because it, su it, it surprises you, you know, it makes you kind of laugh, like bum. And then for a split second, you're kind of like, dude, does the song stop? But a bum bum. It's like, oh, kind of catches you off guard. Because a lot of stuff about what makes music catchy it can also be compared to what makes jokes funny, which is that element of surprise or unexpectedness. But not so surprising that it's like jarring, although that can be funny in its own way. So Emmer Effer, this was actually the third song that I made for this album. I can just go over this process that I do for making music. This is my new process. This is the process that I process that I used for all of these songs in this album. I usually did not start with a beat. For maybe two of these songs, I did start with a beat, because you can if it's like an interesting and unique beat. But sometimes, if I just start with a beat, I'll end up just going with like... And I can't tell you how many songs, I, songs I've used that sort of 60s grocery store soup, sounds of supermarket beat. So for all the songs, I usually just start by messing around on the keyboard, and a lot of people will tell you this. Now actually, Hans Zimmer in his master class says that when he's coming up with a melody, he'll sit, sit in front of the piano and then sit on his hands so that way he, do, he doesn't touch the piano, and he kind of just goes into this meditative state, tries to come up with a come up with a melody. Although, I don't know how he can do that. I mean, he's Hans Zimmer, so he's kind of, I don't know, maybe he's on like a whole other level than us. We're just not... We're just not on Hans Zimmer's level. <laughs> what I have to do is I just kind of have to play around on the piano. But because I've heard this piano sound like my entire life from piano lessons when I was a kid, this piano, the sound of the piano doesn't really like inspire me at all because I know what a piano is going to sound like. So what I'll actually do is just kind of either go through preset synths on my computer or tr start making my own synth. Um, I'll just be messing around on the piano, you know. Trying, trying different things out. Sometimes I even like to try playing songs from ear that I already know. And then sometimes, you know, as I'm trying to figure them out and I'll play what I think the melody is or what it looks like on the piano, I'll end up playing something completely different and inadvertently come up with a new melody. But the important part is not, is you don't want to try to come up with new melodies, all right? Because you're just going to dig yourself in a hole. What you want to do is just try just messing around on the piano, play songs that you maybe already know or already familiar with, and then maybe mess around with them. I mean, not trying to create anything new, just sort of expand upon that idea. I don't know, maybe that was really confusing. Maybe my first explanation was better. Maybe I'll make another video that goes into more depth and will actually show me making something. So MRF was just kind of like a landslide. It just, it just, it just worked as I was making it. I made it. I just spit on there, that's really nice. Uh, it just kind of worked, so that's lucky. Now, this wasn't originally the first song in the album, that little intro you hear. Which, by the way, is from one of my interlocking films. Oh, we're dead. Did you just talk? I think she just talked. <laughs> she said I'll look more dead. <laughs> yeah, do that. Actually, it was the song called Dance Hall, which was the second album, second song that I made for the album. But the song, I felt like wasn't a good introduction to the weirdness of the album. Then we go into Was 7. 
Now about these names, a lot of times in the past I've tried, spent so long to try to figure out what her name was, and oftentimes that became more important than the actual song itself. So what I do when I'm actually saving a song, I'll, the file name, I'll just put whatever the first word comes to mind if I haven't already named something like that. And sometimes that ends up being the real name of the song. In this case, all of these are, retain their original names, file names. Was 7 I came up with that melody when I was messing around on the Korg Volca. I know some people say that gear is not everything, but sometimes you, you want to get new gear because it might inspire you, even if it just ends up sitting around in your house at least. It gave you some inspiration to try something different. And I know that song was cool and interesting because the sort of- Your bass note isn't the root of the chord, it's actually the root of one of the chord inversions. Let's see, I don't even- I don't even know what these chords are. So I'm playing a C chord. That E is becoming the- is not the root of the chord, but it, I'm using it as the bass note. So that's kind of interesting and gives a unique sound that you don't often hear. So we'll move on to the next one, Cosine. My, a lot of my friends like this one. So the reason I went from Was7 to Cosine is that Was7 starts with this sort of a ambient little toy speaker. And I thought that would go nicely, that would flow into the the ambient piano that starts cosine off. So cosine was a song that I started making and I couldn't figure out where it wanted to go. I made this sort of perpetuum mobile minimalist melody that sort of repeats itself and I didn't know where to go. I added these like ELO Mr. Blue Sky drums. So when you're stuck like this and you can't figure out where a song needs to go, there are other two things that are happening. Either one, you need to take the song in a completely different direction, you need, to, you need to switch it up. Or two, you need to end the song. You need to make an ending for the song. And I know that this song didn't need an ending because the part that I had written was just up until those drums. So I decided to just take the same chords and switch it to like a lo-fi hip-hop song with sort of trap hi-hats. Then we have the song Clash. Now this- now Cosine actually ends on a very like ambient chord. I thought it would be cool if I went to Clash next, because Clash starts off with just drums. And drums are ambiguous, so they can mean anything, really. What they're doing is that they're, since the song and the previous song ended without a back, without drums, these drums are suggesting that I'm about to subvert your expectations. So you're hearing these drums, what's happening? And then you hear the and then you're aware that we're going back to that f funky synth pop sort of thing. Although Clash was the first song I made for this album, so I believe it is the least like any other song on the album. It's the most unique. And it was when I was trying to figure out what I want the album to sound like. So after Clash, I go into Sign, which is just co the chords of Cosine, but just played on an, like an ambient pad that I made. And so that's like a really chill, relaxing song to sort of take you out of, to take you at, at back out of Clash and then prepare you for London. London was another case of um, try getting stuck when making the song. In fact, that actually happened in two places. The first place was after I made the dun 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 dun, like the Thundercat sort of um, soul piano riff, and I didn't know what, where to go from there. Decided to switch it up, I added, I put in some, like, disco drums. And then I changed the bass, instead of being this sub bass sort of riff, to be like a disco bass. Do, 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 just sort of mirroring the kick drum. 
some cool synth um, lead there. And I didn't know where to go from there. At this point, I thought, well, this is probably just going to be a shorter song. So I'll go ahead and end it. So I ended it with this really sort of classy, fast progressing strings. New Fakes. This was one of the first songs I made. I started with the sort of Undertale um, news sort of chords, I guess, from the... I don't even know what you'd call that part of the game. And I didn't know where to go from there. I kind of got stuck, so I decided, why don't I just take it in a new direction? So I turned it into this, like, J. Dilla sampled song. You're in the wrong frame of mind. You're in the wrong frame of mind. Be ourselves, yeah, be natural. So, um, sampling Rivers Cuomo's voice, the little harp sound, that's just a preset synth from Korg Darwin, I think is what the synth is called. And later in I introduced some strings. Um, it's from some, some instrumental pop song. I don't know what it was. I'd have to go look, but I'm too lazy. But you get the idea. Insert Coin was the last song that I made for the album. And it's almost like the best song in the album, I think. Like it sounds like music that you'd hear at the start of like an I independent retro game that's made with pixel art graphics. And then we have Bebop. Now this is made all using that original method that I was telling you about before. Oh, I, I think I might want to go a bit more in depth on that method, maybe in another video, maybe in this video. I don't know. This is definitely a song that just came out of me messing around on the piano. I was just pl I was um, playing whatever that first song you hear in like Wind Waker is. <laughs> And, you know, I was just playing it, and then maybe I made a mistake somewhere, and I went, do it, do it. You got a little, nice little bass riff. But then, you have that drums. I, this case, I actually, I applied this cool bass thing to a song that I already started. But the song just had the drums. And what do you know, it's using that same stupid... And then I added these chords that made it kind of feel like a, like the start music of a Nintendo Wii U game. And that was one of those songs where I was just like, oh, we just gotta end this song, this song's over. And then lastly, you have Dance Hall, which is the first, the second song that I made for this album, but it didn't really fit anywhere musically in the album. So I just kind of tacked it on at the end. That does not mean it's a bad song. This song is really good. <laughs> this was the case where I actually made the beat first, and I made the bass um, sort of mirror the drums. And then when you go in for the drop, it actually, I, I do a little thing that I, I, I heard from Thundercats. I think it's called like These Feelings. I don't know, let me check. No, it's called Them Changes. It just goes into this bridge for a moment. And when it get when it rises for the drop, you know, it actually just skips the first beat of the first song. One, two, three, four. Two, three, four. And that's another one of those surprise things, just subverting the listener's expectations. <laughs> So that was I'm Not Cool. I guess I'll talk about the album art. You can see right there, that's the that's the album art. My mom painted that, and she's like, this is tacky. I don't want this. This is awful. This is awful painting that I made. I'm like, mom, what are you talking about? This looks like, this looks like a great painting. This totally looks like Vaporwave. There you go, album art, done. This is the second album art that I didn't make. The first album art I didn't make was for Far From Home, or my friend um, Doodlist the Doodler. I asked her to, if I could use the art, and she said yes, and I was like, okay, thanks. I'll put you in the description of the song, of the album. So I'm not going, not right, not right now at least, I don't think I want to make 
a video about my musical process, me actually making a song. I think I'll make that a little bit later, and I might include it in this video, who knows. I'm just gonna wrap it up right here. Um, I know this is mind-blowing, but now, now there's the Super Dane Twitter you can follow me at. Remember this, the Tumblr? The Super Dane Tumblr that, um, only my best friend followed and literally no one else? Well, now there's a Twitter, and apparently Twitter's more hip and more cool, and I can be more hip and cool and get some, get some more thick hips. So follow me on Twitter. I don't even know what my handle is. It's probably the Super Dane, to be honest. Uh, Super Dane, Twitter. You gotta follow me. At the Super Dane. Right now, only, I only have three followers. And that about wraps it up. If you, you gotta, you gotta listen to that album already, if you, alright, if you haven't heard it already. And my new glasses still haven't arrived yet, so... Wait, I need, I need the glasses to do the thing. Alright, and I'll catch you in the next episode.